now, once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to The World Over Live. My next guest has spent 25 years practicing pediatric and adolescent medicine, as well as counseling teens and their parents. In her latest book, she casts her gaze at the unique bond between mothers and sons. It's called Strong Mothers, Strong Sons, Lessons Mothers Need to Raise Extraordinary Men. In honor of Mother's Day, I sat down with Dr. Meg Meeker to talk about the book and discuss those secrets every mom should know to strengthen or rebuild her relationship with her boy. Take a look. Meg, you start this book talking about a mother's influence over their son yeah. and that you're really teaching them how to relate to all women. How so? Yes. Well, I think that mothers are more in tune to their son's emotions and the emotional side. And it's difficult because mothers don't always understand how boys are thinking and how they want to relate. But I think that it's very important for a mother to show boys how women think and how uh, to relate to different women of all ages. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, they, they teach them, mothers draw their sons out, if you will, get them to talk a little bit more, get them to talk to them as their moms, and then to talk to other women in their lives. Tell me the difference between the way girls are wired as opposed to boys, and why is it so difficult for a mother to sort of tap into that wiring? Oh, well, they're, you know, they're wired differently from the get-go. Mm -hmm. You know that as a, oh, as a yeah. dad of uh, fathers <laughs> and, or as sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. But boys are very visual people. Boys don't have to talk as much. Mm -hmm. uh, boys have a need, a physical need to let their energy out and to release. Mm -hmm. um, and, and girls don't. You know, girls bond with people through talking. Mm. Boys bond with people through doing things. Yeah. Go throwing a ball or being outside or doing an activity. Mm -hmm. And that's hard for mothers because they're t always trying to talk to their sons and draw them out and thinking, my son doesn't want to bond with me because he doesn't want to talk. Right. Well, that's not true. Well, he does want to bond, but in a different way. And in the book, you talk about the importance of that verbalization. Exactly. And, and for the mother to teach her son an emotional language. Yes. But that's yes. often difficult. It's very hard. And really what I'm trying to do when you, and I, my whole chapter on teach your son an emotional, given an emotional vocabulary, is not teaching a boy to feel differently or feel more, but to help him identify his feelings and say, you are angry, you are sad. Now this is what you do with your anger and your sadness. Because uh -huh. boys will shut down in second and third and fourth grade. You know, a lot of them will sort of give a stiff upper lip and, and um, you know, not cry and that kind of thing. But it's really the mom who comes along and says it's really okay not just to cry when you're little, but to have anger and to feel anger and to learn to do something with it. And I think it's important so these boys don't grow into 35 and 40 year olds who sort of implode because they've never dealt with any kind mm, of feelings. They've never let those emotions Exactly. Up. And the mother, you think, is the key to sort of I unlocking do. it? Well, mothers are verbal and again, they mm -hmm. bond through, through talking mm -hmm. and dads tend not to. And Dads, I think, are afraid of turning their sons into weak people by talking about emotions. And again, the purpose in the book isn't to make boys weak. It's to help them identify their feelings and know what to do with them in a healthy way. But how do you do that? How do you create that bond, that that emotional connection, that emotional vocabulary yeah. without feminizing him? Like? Well, because all you're doing is helping them identify feelings that are already there. Are you mad? Are you sad? Mm -hmm. And here's what you do when you're mad or when you're sad or when you're happy. But you're not I'm not advocating getting boys to talk on and on and on about their yeah, feelings. Not, they don't have no, to join the panel on the view. No, 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 okay. exactly. <laughs> exactly, it's not about talk, it's, it's learning to identify their feelings and then learning what to do with them. Mm -hmm. Anger, for instance, is a huge one for young Tell boys. me about the importance of affection, a mother's affection toward her son as he grows developmentally. I mean, yeah. you see this in your practice. Yeah. What happens if it's not there and how does that affection, or should it, yeah. change in the course of a boy's well, maturation? Well, it, ha it has to change during the course of a boy's life. And I always tell parents, the first 10 years are really, of a boy's life are really about mom. Mom mm -hmm. is the one who kind of cuddles him and puts him to bed at night and he feels safe and comfortable with mom, but then when he moves into those pre-adolescent years, he starts to feel a little creepy with that because he's learning that he's growing into a man. So he gives a lot of pushback to mom, mm. hurts mother's feelings, but it's very important for mothers to allow their sons to push back and then for dad in the home to say, you know what, the next 10 years of his life are really all about me because mm. boys are visual yeah. and they have to see a good man in, t in order to turn into a good man. Mm. So if a mother appropriately 
stands back and lets her boys become more independent during the teen years, and then they go off to college. The boys will circle back around in their mid-twenties. They'll have a great relationship with their mother. If their mother doesn't let go, they start to feel that their mothers are dependent and needy. And I'm seeing a lot of that, Raymond. Really? Because mothers are hyper-parenting. They, they want to... Um, they Smother the boys. They smother the boys. Mm -hmm. They do too much for the boys. And then these boys hit 25, and they really don't know how to apply for a job or have a job or stand right. on their own two feet because mom makes life too nice too for them. dominating exactly yeah yeah exactly. And they never really they can never really blossom and they've as lot and they've got to learn to let go mm. yeah what happens when though it, and it is emotionally wrenching when mommy becomes the enemy yes uh, when she is sort of pushed away yeah. how are, how do you advise mothers deal with that and it is part of the natural growth of them? Well, I have a whole chapter. Yeah. Um, he has a bow and arrow and the target's on your back. Oh. And that's how mothers feel. <laughs> yeah, as a mother of a 22-year-old yeah. son, I really felt like the enemy. Hmm. But I think, first of all, we have to learn, don't take it personally. It's not about us, it's about him. Because mothers will, their son will say something to them and they'll immediately say, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Right. It's not about you doing anything wrong. It's a process God designed for him to learn how to think on his own and to stand on his own. Hmm. So not to take it personally and to understand that even young teenage boys have temper tantrums like they did when they were two. Mm -hmm. yeah. You talk here about home, yes. the importance of home. When, in your practice in researching and writing this book, what are the things that men most remember from their childhoods and how does a mother fit into that? Oh, mother is a man's home and I never thought about she that. She is the home. She is the home. She's the the sense of home. Mm -hmm. Home is where my mother is mm -hmm. and I never thought about that until I was interviewing men for the book and one man said to me, it was very chilling, he said, you know, I've been in battle, I've been in wars and it's not uncommon that when a man is dying in, uh, in battle that he cries out for his mother, not his wife. And so it's wow. that sense that this, these are where my roots are. This is my initial comfort. She's the, the person who taught me what love was, who taught me how to trust people, who taught me who God is. Mm. Often it's the mother who teaches young boys that, and that's how they set down their roots. So they learn to be very, um, to stand on solid ground when they're young children through the comfort and security of mom. Mm. So that's what I mean by home. Mm. You really, you mentioned it a moment ago, how important the mother is to connect Connecting the boy and later the man yes. with faith and God. Now, I thought, and I've seen it, that it's really the father's example, isn't it, that the boy will model, and if the father is not faithful, is not a regular churchgoer, chances are the boy won't be either. Exactly. Ideally, it's the dad in the home. Mm -hmm. But you and I know there are a lot of single moms out there. Almost half of all Half moms. of all, yeah. All, and so mothers often are the ones who take their kids to mass, who make them do their catechism, who teach that to them. Mm -hmm. Dads are often very busy. Mm -hmm. Mom's the one who prays with them. Mom is the one who says, this is what Jesus' character is like. And sure, they look to dad and, and they look up to dad and they watch dads very, very carefully, mm -hmm. but often it's mom who has the, the conversations about who God is and who Christ is. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that pray more with the kids. And they really are the bridge they are. to the father. Explain that because yeah. in some relationships, in some households, you see uh, there's almost a war between the parents yeah. for the children's affections, yeah. which is not a good thing. Drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. And that's, and I, you know, I speak a lot around the country and I speak directly to moms about that. Yeah. You cannot criticize dad in a home, whether dad is there or whether he isn't. A mother is the one who teaches her son how to connect with a dad when he maybe, maybe feels alienated. She's the one who should be respectful, look up to the dad so that the son will follow suit and respect and love the dad as well. Mm. If a son hears his mother constantly complaining what, about dad and what he is doing, she will sort of pull him over to his side and he'll start to believe that his dad really isn't a good person. Uh. Well, that not only harms the son-dad relationship, but this son's going to grow in to a, a man, get married, and become a dad. And if all he hears is, she was being a dad isn't very good because I heard mom criticize dad and complain about mm. dad, it really sets him up for failure as a dad, So if it will. poisons his it ability poisons to him. enter into a exactly. full relationship and later. We, wow. Because we're verbal people, we don't realize how devastating criticism of the husband is to the son. And we're living in a culture that dad bashes 
all the time. Mm. Try to find a nice Father's Day card. Oh yeah, or a it's sitcom. It's terrible. Yeah, a sitcom. It. Raymond, you know, uh, um, uh, everybody loves Raymond. Everybody loves Raymond, and that's true. Sometimes. Yes. <laughs> if they watch the right channel. That's right. Sometimes at my house. Sometimes not. <laughs> yeah. um, let's talk about the thing that I think causes all parents to tremble a little bit, but particularly mothers. Mothers yes. often offshore or delegate the big talk, talk. about sex yes. to the father. Yes. Is that a good thing? It depends. Mm -hmm. I tell parents, because parents always say, who should tell the kids? Right. You know, who should, and I said, in every family, there's one person who's chicken and one who, person who's a really big chicken. <laughs> so so, so the, the lesser of the two goes. Uh -huh. So it really doesn't matter, but I think it's important that whoever can sort of take a big deep breath and have a very respectful, honest, sometimes blunt conversation. Mm. It's very important because the bottom line is, Raymond, you know with your kids, our kids are being talked to about sex, yep. sexual activity, and their sexuality. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that we, teach them and usually it's the mother because again we're driving in the car Dad's when the busy. kids if dad is busy and mm -hmm. the kids are having the conversation in the back or the son comes home from school and he's a little disturbed because of something he heard at school mm -hmm. so we pick up the pieces and it's very important to sit boys down and talk to them why is it so important do you you have a list here of mm -hmm. things every mother needs to know that you yeah. see in your practice yeah. Share that with the Sexual audience. activity during the teen years is medically very, very dangerous. When do the teen years, how are they defined? Uh, well, starting when? 13, mm -hmm. 12 to 13. And it's we, starting earlier. It's starting earlier. And what kids are seeing, we now know that the age of that boys first see pornography has gone from about 14 down to about 9 or 10. Mm. So kids are getting a lot of messages. Sexual activity during the teen years is very dangerous from a medical standpoint, from a psychological standpoint, and from a spiritual standpoint. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we teach kids, young boys in particular, how not to be sexually active. And I tell parents, if you don't train them not to be sexually active, they will. They'll follow the pack. Mm -hmm. And that's where the pack is going. It's also important to teach kids how to appreciate and respect their sexuality and to preserve modesty. What is the opener for a mother? approaching this particular this topic of sexuality particularly single moms easy okay easy and here you go you sit your son down and you say Andy I know now you're you know a freshman in high school or in the eighth grade and I'll bet you that you're seeing and hearing a lot of things that are a little bit confusing or maybe you have some friends who are sexually active do you and he kinda looks down and he pretends he didn't hear what you said mm -hmm. so you keep on going and you say if I were you and I'm growing up in this culture getting a lot of information about sex and movies and so forth, I'd be a little confused. So I know you might be uncomfortable talking about this, but I need to tell you some things. So, so you don't have to respond, but let me tell you, it's very important that you're not sexually active during your teen years. And I know you're going to feel like um, an outcast and the weirdo, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. And you start to lay it out. And then you say to him, I know it's uncomfortable, but I want you to always realize, I have all the right answers. Your friends don't. So when you hear things at school, I know you'll feel embarrassed. Please come home and ask me questions. I want to be the go-to person when you have questions about sex. Mm -hmm. And it can be done. And I'll tell you something, Raymond. The more you talk about it with your kids, the easier it gets. Because they'll come to you they will. in they a will. crisis when something arises. Not only your kids, your kids' friends will. I get mm -hmm. calls from my 22-year-old's friends at college asking me questions. Wow. It, and, and it's well, delightful. Well, they go to the expert. That's why. Yeah, but, but it's delightful. And, um, and, and, and we laugh and we giggle because I, th I think, you know, kids want to hear what you have to say. They want to hear. Mm -hmm. And they also want to know it's very important that we communicate to boys. Your sexuality is wonderful. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Mm -hmm. And we need to communicate that because the world out there and the media is telling them it's not so great. We had a couple of emails. One of them I want to share with you. It wasn't only one. There were several like this where a mother found out that her child, a young boy, yep. had a sexual encounter. Mm -hmm. And at times these were repeated. What should the reaction be? This particular mother freaked out. Yep. Uh, the dad came in. They, they broke off a friendship because it was a family friend. Yep. What would you recommend? Well, that, that comes up all the time. You know, first of all, 
Um, if he, again, if he hadn't been trained how not to be sexually active, he follows the pack. Mm -hmm. So I would sit down with a son. If you're going to freak out, which most parents do, do it not in the presence of the child. Yeah. Work it out and then sit down with him as a couple, if you can, a mom and a dad, and say, listen, we understand what you did, and I understand, um, you know, why you did it, because I, the, the dad will say, I was a young man too, but it's very important that you stop, mm -hmm. and it's very important that you take a, a, a very dramatic right-hand turn now, because if you continue along this path being sexually active, you're going to end up with either a disease or you're going to end up really with some emotional scars. Mm -hmm. So our job now, it, as your parents, is to help you from now until you're married, navigate a culture that's toxic, that's sexually very toxic, mm -hmm. that's going to constantly want to lure you back into sexual activity, but because we love you and we respect you, we're going to help you avoid that. But it's very important, Raymond, not to shame the boy, because kids will never come back if you shame them. Mm -hmm. So say, you know what, your sexuality is so important to us, we're going to help you protect it and preserve it from now on. So please come to us in the future if you're thinking about this again. And, and delaying that first sexual encounter, Counter. preferably to marriage, is, is so ideal. important. And setting up that ideal. Exactly. We hear in the culture so often in kids, I mean, they walk into the dorm and there's the, I remember when I was in college, yeah. you walk in the dorm, there's the fishbowl full of condoms exactly. when you walk in. You point out in the book, condoms are not no. The, 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 the silver bullet that they're, they claim to be it, when it comes to protecting kids, in quotes, from STDs. Exactly. Tell us about how, what you're seeing in your practice. You know, kids often always ask me, but Dr. Meeker, don't condoms work? And I uh -huh. say, well, it depends on what infection you're talking about and, you're t and how old the, the person is. The bottom line mm. is condoms don't work well enough. Mm. They work best against HIV. They work mm. poorly against infections like HPV, mm. which we now know young boys are getting um, vaccinated against. Yep. They work m less well against things like herpes, which is an epidemic. One in five Americans over age 12 test positive for genital herpes. Mm. That's tough stuff to hear. But this is very serious stuff we're talking about. So sending a kid off to college with a, uh, you know, a Percival or a, a, a back pocket full of condoms is not the answer. It's very, very serious. What is the most important thing that mothers need to do that they often don't in relation to their sons? They need to raise their expectations of their son's behavior, the way he talks, the way he treats them, the way he treats women. You know, we, we dumb our boys down. We treat them like they can't do this and they can't do that and they need us to help them do it, no matter what it is, whether it's applying to college or applying to job. And we also treat our boys as though they're out of control sexually. It's one of the most devastating things that we do to boys. And um, we need to say, look, you are 16, you're 17, you're 18, I know this is tough, but I'm your Mom, I'm linking arms with you, and you're not going to go down that route. I believe in you, and I know you can do it. So we really need to, to use an overused word, empower our boys to stand on their own two feet, to take charge of themselves, their mind, their body, and their spirit, mm -hmm. and really launch them. And we can do it. Yeah, I know. Women civilize men. And, we do. And, and teach them how to be human. First mom and later yes. the misses. And if mom doesn't do it, God help the wife. Oh yeah, the poor wife. Poor wife. Just, yeah. she's, she's out of luck. Strong mothers, strong sons, lessons mothers need to raise extraordinary men. It's an extraordinary book. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Raymond. Happy Mother's Day to all you moms, including mine and dear mother Angelica and Rebecca too.